Here are the panels. There's 10 strings, two panels per string. Five of those strings are on one line, and five of those strings are on the second line. I'll explain that a little bit in a minute. We used our own inch and a half aluminum, drilled through it to clamp it down to the S2, S5 clamp, sorry. Um, those were worth the money because it allowed me to not to penetrate my roof. And then this is just angle iron, or angle aluminum, stainless steel screws. We used all stainless steel fasteners here too, although they're not really weathered. We used three quarter inch conduit to one, one inch and a quarter, one and a quarter inch. These silly little covers right here, uh, that's the only ones they had, so I got those. Yep. So that's again, that's uh, 20 panels, there's 10 strings two panels per string and then they come down to the combiner box through the inch and a quarter which I still have to I want to suspend that and support it properly and anchor it down it's anchored top and bottom but not in the center and then it goes to the these eco-worthy pre-wired boxes and you can see there's two three four five strings there one two three four five strings and that was a mistake <laughs> But I have room for expansion here and here if I need. It's almost into the 1,000 watts by adding those four panels. And then those go down through the roof penetration, which goes down into the garage. This is inside the combiner box. And this was purchased all pre-wired. But you see I've got an extra, I can put one more string with two more panels on it. I can also wire these in three panel strings. Raises my voltage a little bit, but um, it's not really necessary right now. I have 20 panels and they seem to do a good job, but if I want to add a few more, I can add two more panels to each line, which would be about uh, let's go four times 285, whatever that is, almost another 1,000 watts. Anyway, these were pre-wired. I can't see there's any way somebody could build this for the price. I think it was $115 or something like that. Anyway, pretty neat little deals. Okay, so now down in the garage, um, an inch and a quarter conduit comes down and um, goes through a 100 amp breaker for each line. So each 100 amp breaker is uh, five strings, so 10 panels. The line one, all my stickers are coming off unfortunately, goes to a midnight solar, charges the battery. Line two, midnight solar, charges the batteries. Um, four strings, 190 amp hour I think. 100 amp hour, sorry. I'm running a 48 volt system. So each string is 100, so I have 400 amp hours at 48 volts. Um, now, the way it works very quickly is charge controller charges the batteries. This one is the master, and that's the slave. So they work together to charge the batteries, which is a common battery, common battery uh, system. All of the batteries work together to provide the 4,000 watt limiting inverters and they're auto islanding so I can explain that very quickly I'm sure everybody has seen that before but um, what these guys do is they're solid state relays that shut these off so the midnight solar says once the batteries get down to 47.5 yes I barely use the batteries I don't use them for backup I use them for basically sun storage um, so it monitors the battery voltage. When it gets below 47.5, it shuts these off. Because they're auto islanding inverters, they shut off automatically. Then the solar power charges the batteries until they get to, I believe it's 52.5. And then they recharge the solar charge controller, turns the solid state relays back on, and these guys go. And it just keeps cycling like that the whole time. Now. These are auto islanding 1000 watt inverters. I'm running at 120 volts. So there's 2000 watts per line one and another 2000 watts available line two. I think you can see, I'm not sure if you can or not. It's hard. Uh, it's running 960 watts. That's AC, there's a 963, so almost 2000 watts in the house. There's another 953. So we've got my 
you look at the very bottom there, there's a five something. That's how many watts are being drawn from commercial power. So this works with a commercial power all at the same time. It is grid tied. Draws extra in from commercial power, uses solar when it can. I think right here I'm running 49.3 volts, 31 amps, and in from the solar is 64, which is just perfect. So that's why I ran two, two panels per string. It barely is above the 48 volts that I need, so there's not a lot of work that the charge controller has to do. It keeps it, uh, keeps it cool and keeps it from overworking by keeping those voltages similar. All right. So um, these are the links which tie the midnight solars together. And then this little wire right here goes down. That's what shuts the solid state relays on and off. This is 220, I'm sorry, 240. I'm just used to calling it 220. 240 from the house. It splits line one and splits line two. That's what shuts line one and two off. They're 40 amp. And I haven't had a single problem with any of this equipment. It's been in for about a year. Not in this actual configuration, but mostly the same. So these guys right here go to the amp clamps which are on my line. I'll show you those in a minute in the main circuit breaker in the house. So we're actually providing power to the whole house. There's no this circuit or that circuit is backed up. There's no UPS. All the batteries do is when the sun goes behind the cloud or in the evening for about an hour and a half, I can run on battery power um, before it, the solar charge controller shut it down. And then it just charges up the next morning, early in the morning when nobody's home. So we're not using hardly any electricity anyway. And as you can see, now, I think you can see, 267 with 19 watts going coming in from commercial so it keeps it keeps the balance these things work really good I think they were $260 a piece um, I had a whiz bang junior to determine my usage but it just didn't work right the way I have this configured um, like I said that's it this is all common return these are tied together with a six gauge, so I've got one battery string here, three battery strings here. That's because I, ch oops, sorry, three battery strings there, and one battery string there, because I changed the configuration um, to a common battery string situation. And that is my 5600 watt grid tied limited 4000 AC watt capable solar system. Kind of proud of it working really good we see good sunny days where we use all the electricity that's coming in we see 30 to 32 kilowatt hours a day on a winter day I get between 16 and 18 19 something like that kilowatt hours a day uh, you know if it's raining and really bad then it just drops down to almost nothing but that's why we're grid tied so we don't have to rely on it so some things that I've learned um, when I ordered my solar panels, the max you could order for one shipping charge was 16 panels, so I ordered 16. If you look kind of close at those, you can see that they're damaged a little bit. They're still producing power, but they're only together about 150, maybe 200 watts. Um, what happened was they were damaged in shipping. I reported it, and then the guy said, hey, we'll ship out two more, and he was a really good company. I think it's Sun Boulevard on eBay. and. Um, he shipped them out and I said, hey, if you're since you're having to ship two more and it's going to be covered by insur your insurance, can I order four more panels? So I got a total of six from him. I paid the standard price and then didn't have to pay shipping, so that's why I ended up with 20 panels. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, it's always good to have bigger. And I just ran these down here. It's just temporary. So I figure when those things finally break, then they will be uh, taken down. So another thing I learned was I got excited when my wife said I could actually buy all the parts. And I selected, I was watching these inverters, and but I didn't really want to buy them. I just wanted to watch them for price and stuff. Um, anyway, what happened was I ordered these when I got excited instead of the blue ones on the main system. Now these are limited, grid tie limiting inverters, but the limiters were old school. They had a little black box, and I just couldn't never get them to work right. So I just use them in here on those broken panels that I showed you earlier, and they're making, shoot, there's 84.4 and 49, so, or 50. 
in the same amount of sun. They're only making like 130. They're broken panels. It's just free power. It's just running right into the grid. They're cool because they plug right into the outlet. And like I said, it's just temporary, so please don't be too mean. But anyway, those were a mistake, but they're good, good backups, and uh, I can always plug them in and, and use them on the other system if something breaks. So another thing I learned was um, on the battery strings, those are, I think these are 100 amp breakers. But on the battery strings, what I was trying to do initially, because my this line over here, line two, in the house was is not balanced. You know how most houses they're not like perfectly balanced for usage. I mean, you turn a toaster on 120 volts, so line one comes, you know, needs something. Line two doesn't. Um, so I was I put one battery string on this because it was used so much less than this one. Before I realized, you can use a common battery string if you set up your your charge controllers to have a master and a slave so they don't mess up the charge on the batteries because that stuff is very specific for types of batteries and all. Um, so that's why down here there's a tie uh, just six, six gauge because there's only one battery over here so it only, it'll never tr need more than that draw for charging the batteries. Um, and then three battery strings over here. Maybe one day I'll reconfigure this so that it's all on a common bus bar but uh, there's really no need, it works fine. I ran my heat uh, verification, my little gun, um, make sure nothing's getting over hot, even under full load. So that's the last thing that I really kind of learned. I'm very happy with the way the system's configured now. Okay, so I forgot to talk, talk about price. I know everybody wants to know how much it costs. Charge controllers, they're, um, from a local company, they're Midnight Solar, that I bought them from Missouri Wind and Solar, I believe. I think they were about $500 a piece. The inverters were about $265, I got them on eBay. Uh, these things were, you know, $20 or something. Um, the cabling, I was able to scratch, scrounge from work uh, with my boss's approval, of course. And then the batteries, uh, a friend of mine was doing a removal, and I was able to get those, they're four years old. So they've got a good bit of life on them. The solar panels were $110 a piece with 385 shipping. Um, and then the uh, the combiner boxes, I believe, were like $115 or $120 a piece. I think all together, conduit and, and aluminum stuff and for the racking and all that, uh, it's between $45 and $5,000, $4,500 and $5,000. I did all the installation and design work myself. Um, and with my friends, I'm sorry. Uh, so, uh, you know, the rack was also donated. So, I have a lot of donated things. Batteries are, you know, a big expense that I didn't have to pay for. And I think you might have seen um, some of these batteries down here. So, there's three of those CD technologies. Those are old Telcom batteries. And those are out of, those big batteries there are out of uh, uh, gem sets, generators that have been replaced. They're still good, but um, I don't have, like I said, I'm running a 48 volt system, so I don't have proper quantity to bring my, to add another string. And even if I did, I'd like it to be matched so that everything charges correctly, so I probably wouldn't do that unless I needed to, or I built another smaller system, maybe on the shop or something, but I'm pretty happy with this, so I don't think that's going to happen. Anyway, um, I can't think of anything else. A relatively inexpensive system, and I'm very happy that I built it. And so far, it's performing as nicely as I wanted it to, and the way I wanted it to. So, trying to get a little close up and overview of everything. How it's wired and connected. And, um, I think these inverters are actually supposed to be mounted like that. I thought about putting them sideways. Battery system. You can see those are actually proper DC rated breakers. Alright. I hope that's good enough.